Some anger's coming out and I'm feeling it. It's like, I just want to punch this bag. This room is perfect for casting shadows. I wake up with claw marks on my back, long marks. Something. Was that a voice? Mm -hmm. Brad and Krista moved into this rural bungalow a year ago. They've been busy renovating in preparation for an exciting addition to their family. Well, I'm pregnant. 16 weeks now. Mm -hmm. That's a new excitement in our life right now. It's anxious, excited. Kind of have that feeling where you want to get all the work done. Brad and Krista shared an interest in the supernatural and enjoyed collecting gothic imagery. I just think they look cool. I think dragons look cool. Dragons are really neat looking, and I've always been into the supernatural fantasy stuff. But it seems it's not just Krista's interest in the macabre that has traveled with her from home to home. I've had lots of unexplainable things happening ever since I was about eight or nine. I kind of feel like I have dark spirits that have followed me throughout all the houses and places I've been. It's confusing, and I actually thought I was nuts. I don't know what's going on, really. However, since moving into the home, Krista is not the only one experiencing strange phenomena. I must have been a bit of a skeptic before I encountered a lot of this stuff here. I'd never experienced anything paranormal, and then I met Krista, and then paranormal was there. I don't know what to say. <laughs> is their shared interest in the Gothic driving what they have been experiencing, or is there something else going on? With a baby on the way, Brad and Krista are determined to figure out what is behind these unexplained events. They've contacted the Paranormal Home Inspectors team in hopes that they can shed some light on the situation. Combining traditional and non-traditional investigative techniques, our team is made up of intuitive healer Nadine, certified home inspector Brian, and paranormal investigator and researcher Michelle. The team will try and uncover what is behind the unnerving events happening in this rural home. To begin the investigation, Michelle meets with Brad and Krista. So why have you called in our home inspection team? A lot of things that I can't really explain have been happening to us. Yeah, I hear lots of noises. I heard a woman and a man arguing in the kitchen once when I was doing dishes. Do you ever see these people or are you just hearing them? One time, I saw the woman's face in the spare bedroom. She looked kind of like um, those old-fashioned women. I didn't see the rest of her body, but I, that's the kind of impression I got. Any other strange noises that you can think of? Well, one time, we set up a tape recorder by the side of our bed, and we went to sleep. And then we played it the next day, and we heard some talking into the tape recorder. So have you recorded anything else in the house? After those recordings, we decided to get some equipment. And during this investigation, Krista got pulled out of a chair. Tell me about this, Krista. Hey, well, I was sitting on the chair, one of the rocking chairs at home, and I felt something grab my ankle and rip me off the chair. And at the same time, I felt like something was pushing the chair, too. Did you get hurt? I had trouble walking for a couple weeks. It um, hurt my hip. What else has been happening in the home? One time, I was doing my homework, and the dining room and the door to the kitchen, it started opening and closing really lightly at first, and then all of a sudden it just swung open. And I got up to look to see what was going on, and I saw a black, massy figure running into the porch, and then he disappeared. Another thing would be our main door opens on its own, even though it's locked. Anything you haven't mentioned yet? I don't really move around a lot in my sleep, and I wake up with claw marks on my back, big red long marks. So what is it that you're hoping that we will accomplish for you? Any information that you can give us is, is great. We'll conduct our complete home inspection and let you know what we find out. While Michelle begins her research into the history of the property, certified home inspector Brian Daly starts his inspection looking for possible explanations into the strange occurrences. All right. Looks like we're well under construction here. It's the very first item is this door. I know that they're having problems with the door opening on its own. I can see right away that it's not really installed properly, is it? The hardware itself is loose here. 
it's not even latching properly and there are gaps all around the storm door which will let in wind and if the door's not shut properly blow it open my investigation notes tell me that the homeowner when standing at the sink hears voices looks as though we've got new insulation in the walls here Certainly, if there wasn't insulation in the walls, sound can really travel from the outside of the house to the inside. We're close to neighbors, we're close to a road outside, which it can all contribute to sound transmission inside the building. A homeowner complains about this door opening and closing on its own. And at the same time, when she came up to investigate, she noticed a shadow crossing from the kitchen all the way down into the front entrance. As far as I'm concerned, the doors in this house are not hung properly and it's likely letting through a lot of air. So that can cause wind tunnels and channels throughout the house and could have caused that movement. Let's move on to the shadow. There's a large window in the dining room, a large window in the kitchen, and we've got a road right outside. A car passing can cast shadows through all of these windows all the way down into the entranceway. This chair the homeowner was sitting in, she was sitting cross-legged so her feet weren't on the ground, and uh, she was thrown from the chair onto the ground. It is a recliner rocker, so it does have natural movement. If she was sitting cross-legged in the chair, she doesn't have balance, so her center of gravity is off, and any slight movement could actually cause her to fly off this chair. Hey, I just noticed we've got a guinea pig here. He's squeaking pretty good, too. We also have a cat in the house. Pets can contribute to noises that we're not used to. Can you bear your teeth at me? Oh. Skippers have bit me. <laughs> Some anger's coming out and I'm feeling it. It's like, I just want to punch this bag, like, you know? This is not needing mercy at all. Get the out of here. Brad and Krista moved into their home a year ago. And with a baby on the way, they're anxious to finish their renovations. But several disturbing events in the home have prompted them to contact the Paranormal Home Inspectors team. I heard a woman and a man arguing in the kitchen once. Chrissy got pulled out of a chair. Home Inspector Brian Daly believes that the home's incomplete renovations can provide ample explanation for the strange occurrences. The insulation is not complete, and the lack of tightness with a building envelope will absolutely lead to movement and sound transmission throughout the house. After meeting with Brad and Krista, Michelle proceeded to the local archives, where she discovered that the town's original jailhouse was built in close proximity to the property. Just a couple of doors down, a mere couple of hundred feet, is the old jail. So being a jail, uh, you know that uh, people would be very violent. So we don't know the details of all the events that may have happened in that kind of an environment. Could Michelle's findings relate to what has been going on in the home? As she carries on with her search for clues, Home Inspector Brian Daly continues with his inspection. Here is the master bedroom. The homeowner set up an audio recorder to try to capture sounds of what was happening during the night. We all make noises in our sleep. There's ambient noise throughout the whole house, including the cat outside noise for the guinea pig, all kinds of things that you can hear during the night that we're not even aware of. In this room, the homeowner saw an apparition floating above the computer workstation. I don't really deal with apparitions, but this room is perfect for once again, casting shadows. We've got a window here, a window there. Just outside the house is a major road. Any car traffic outside can cast shadows within this room. One of the other things I've noticed going through the house is that there is lots of imagery of dragons and swords and masks and all sorts of stuff hanging around this house. I'm no psychologist, but if you create an environment where you're constantly looking at scary images, you're going to see scary images. I've completed my investigation, and in my opinion, everything the homeowners have experienced in this house can be chalked up to simple physical activity. Brian is convinced that the homeowners imagination is at play and there are logical explanations for what has been going on in the home but in the interest of a balanced inspection intuitive healer Nadine Mercer will carry out her investigation without prior knowledge of the house its occupants or the disturbing events Nadine will take the spiritual pulse of this house this one's got a deep puzzle to it 
Pressure's on. Pressure's on. Mixed emotions, craziness, dealing with the pain, the heaviness, the weighted down sorrow. Lots of fear on somebody's side. Deep regrets. Somebody's talking to me in here. The communication in this house is for the lady in the house. And I can see you're having bad times. She's confused. Who's talking to me? Male figure. Large man, big feet. I just got a smile. The lady of this home has a very prominent male energy that helps her. Something's, something's bugging me. Something's stopping me. Like, I'll see a vision and it just stops. Like, something, some energy is stopping me. Like, I, I gotta move here and get out of here. This energy here is very heavy, 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 heavy. Waited, waited, waited. Something's coming through. Somebody wants to talk to me. Grandmother, she's got a grandmother here now. And seeing her being more petite, cooking, she's got a wooden spoon, very good in the kitchen. Another energy just blocked the flow again. You know, like I'm agitated being here. Like I just want to spin and like circ and get it off me. Ugh, I just gotta go. Like I'm feeling sick, nauseous, irritable. Like, I want to go. Some anger's coming out and I'm feeling it. It's like I just want to punch this bag, like, you know? Like look at my fists. I just like, I'm frustrated. I feel like picking up that rake and just smashing uh, a window. The energy in this house causes me to feel this way. It's really weighting me down and it's dispersing the lightness and the goodness that I normally carry around. This is not Nadine Mercy at all. This is not me. Get the fuck out of here. I'm going to move around the house again and see if I can't stir up something. I want you out of the house and I just see somebody as if they had a knife or an intention to have a knife. That's the vision I have. Is that devious? My guides are telling me not to give it a name for my own protection. You know, I just want to punch the bag downstairs, so I don't know if I want to take that home with me today, you know? I got kids to deal with. The lady of the home carries this energy. This is an energy that she's carried for quite some time, and she's got to know that she has the power and the strength to empower herself to free this energy that's here. Her soul knows what to do with this but her soul is waiting for direction. She's trying to become conscious of it and there is hope for her and the family and the baby. She's bringing this on. This is not love and light. This is something that's gonna bite me, you know? She needs to make a choice. Am I gonna live in a positive environment within myself or am I gonna live in a negative one? With Nadine's investigation complete, the question lingers. Could this darker energy be the spirit Krista claims follows her? Or could it be connected to the nearby jailhouse that Michelle discovered in her research? With night falling on the final day of our investigation, Michelle and her assistant, Matt, prepare to spend the night. Why do you want Krista and Brad to get out? Come on, tough guy. See what you got. What was that? Can you do it again? I heard something. What is it? Is that a like, voice? Mm -hmm. There's a male that likes to walk through or run through the kitchen here. Where are you running to? You know, you like to pick on the people who live here? You know, we're calling you out right now if you have the guts to do it. Okay, let's go in the office. Let's try the office. The lady that shows her face in this room, can you appear for us? Yeah. You just did a little tap on the wall up there. Whoa! Oh, that's... that's... In the basement. It didn't unlock it, but it set it off. Like, I've never had a vibration sensor just go off like that in its own without something opening or shutting. Clearly, something wants to communicate with us. Did it sound like it was coming from outside to you? It was not near us, but it could have been inside. Where? The light is moving. Look at that. Yeah. It's shaking. That is a really good signifier. Keep going, Matt. I'm going to sit in the chair while I just want to see if it'll push me out. So I'm rocking back and forth in the chair. You know, all you got to do is just, you know, push it forward so I go forward onto the floor. There we go. The door opened. I unlocked the door to because just to see if it would open the door, and it did. It's starting to get light out. I'm going to wrap this up. What did you think? Can I take a break? Sorry. Okay. You okay? I can read your mind. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy. I'm not crazy.
Brad and Krista are anxious to begin a new chapter in their lives. They were hoping that that would happen in their current home. But with numerous mysterious and disturbing experiences, they need to know what or whom is residing with them. Is Krista unwittingly inviting these dark spirits into their home? How can they find peace before their baby is born? Three inspectors that make up a unique team are brought in to investigate. What have they discovered? What did they experience? And what will our homeowners do? We're gonna start off with Brian. Now, Brian is our certified home inspector and he has conducted a traditional home inspection. This door opens on its own. There are gaps all around that door, which will let in wind and blow that door open. Hearing voices in the kitchen, combination of pets, no insulation in the walls, the road and neighbors so close, absolutely has contributed to what she hears in this room. This door opens and closes on its own. Lack of tightness with a building envelope create wind tunnels. As far as the shadows moving through the kitchen, it's windows, it's light, it's the street outside. In this room, the homeowner was thrown from the chair onto the ground. She wasn't sitting sitting properly, and her center of balance could easily have been thrown off, and she could have ended up on the floor. While they were sleeping, the homeowner recorded audio. Whatever he recorded has to do more with ambient noise than it does to do with anything paranormal. Seeing apparitions in the office, again, that room is perfectly set up for casting shadows. Besides which, the house is filled with gothic images that create an environment where you're going to start to see things. So I'm here to deal with the physical, and this is busted. What did you think? Can I take a break? What Sorry. Do you think? <laughs> you okay? I can get her mine. Yeah. You look crazy. You look crazy. You look crazy. Do you want to go? And have a talk with her. Well, she's really upset. Yeah, I just to come with. Yeah. Did he try to see how someone light could fall out of that chair? Yeah, it's just hard hearing that because it makes me sound crazy. After taking some time to compose herself, Krista returns to the table. I'm sorry. That's okay. Oh, no, That's no, okay. No, no, no. If you need time, you need time. Krista. That's okay. Sure, go ahead. Okay. Are Are you okay to to proceed? Yeah. Are you sure? Yeah. Tell me what you're thinking about what Brian said. Have your say. Okay, well, like, I may be light, but I was sitting back in the chair. I got pulled and pushed completely forward. The chair lifted up. How do I lift a chair on my own? This is Brian's opinion. What we're all about is just presenting you with the facts that we have come up with. And then you come up with your own decision as to what it is that you want to believe. Yeah, yeah. My job begins with conducting historical research. Two doors down from you, it used to be a jail. Oh. I didn't know Two that. doors down. Okay. So, with that in mind, I'm going to show you what happened during our investigation. Okay. What was that? Yeah. You just did a little tap on the wall up there. Whoa! Oh, that's. In the basement. It didn't unlock it, but it set it off. Where? Oh, I didn't Look at that. Yeah. It's shaking. That is a really good signifier. There we go. Oh, it opened the door. Clearly, something wants to communicate with us. What do you think? Just need the chandelier. We've never noticed no. it. I'm feeling better that we didn't call you up here for nothing, and at least it communicated with you guys. I feel a lot more relieved. Now, we'll get to our third expert, Nadine. I'm going to show you what her findings were. Somebody's talking to me in here. The communication in this house is for the lady in the house. She has a very prominent male energy that helps her. Something's coming through. Grandmother, she's got a grandmother here now. Another energy just blocked the flow again. You know, like I'm agitated being here. Some anger's coming out and I'm feeling it. It's like, I just want to punch this bag, like, you know. The heavy presence in that home didn't want to show its face. It was blocking me. It was very clear in my mind that it didn't want me to be there. The lady of the home carries this energy. This is an energy that she's carried for quite some time. But she's trying to become conscious of it and there is hope for her and the family and the baby. A lot of dark imagery in the house. This is not love and light. She has the choice to let go of the dark and bring in the light immediately. Her soul knows what to do with this, but her soul is waiting for direction. She needs to make a choice. Am I gonna live in a positive environment within myself or am I gonna live in a negative one? What are you thinking? She's, she's so understanding. She knows what I'm going through. It's just, it's nice having her try and tell me 
um, what I should be doing to make things better. It's, it's comforting. We hope we have given you some answers, and we hope we've provided some form of help. Okay. Thank you. A month after our paranormal investigation, Brad and Krista have come to accept the findings of the team. It gave us a bit of closure to the situation. We accepted, we're not crazy. This does happen to us, and um, we're going forward with this. It's not gonna drag us back, right? Yeah, I just feel like I can finally stop hunting for it now that I kind of know what's there. And I'm really looking forward to <laughs> moving forward and bringing joy into the house and yeah. lightening it up. Some anger's coming out and I'm feeling it. It's like, I just want to punch this bag. This room is perfect for casting shadows. I wake up with claw marks on my back, bong marks. Yeah, you hear me? I heard something. Is that a little voice? Mm -hmm. Brad and Krista moved into this rural bungalow a year ago. They've been busy renovating in preparation for an exciting addition to their family. Well, I'm pregnant, 16 weeks now. Mm -hmm. That's a new excitement in our life right now. It's anxious, excited. Kind of have that feeling where you want to get all the work done. Brad and Krista shared an interest in the supernatural and enjoyed collecting gothic imagery. I just think they look cool. I think dragons look cool. Dragons are really neat looking, and I've always been into the supernatural fantasy stuff. But it seems it's not just Krista's interest in the macabre that has traveled with her from home to home. I've had lots of unexplainable things happening ever since I was about eight or nine. I kind of feel like I have dark spirits that have followed me throughout all the houses and places I've been. It's confusing, and I actually thought I was nuts. I don't know what's going on, really. However, since moving into the home, Krista is not the only one experiencing strange phenomena. I must have been a bit of a skeptic before I encountered a lot of this stuff here. I'd never experienced anything paranormal, and then I met Krista, and then paranormal was there. I don't know what to say. <laughs> is their shared interest in the Gothic driving what they have been experiencing, or is there something else going on? With a baby on the way, Brad and Krista are determined to figure out what is behind these unexplained events. They've contacted the Paranormal Home Inspectors team in hopes that they can shed some light on the situation. Combining traditional and non-traditional investigative techniques, our team is made up of intuitive healer Nadine, certified home inspector Brian, and paranormal investigator and researcher Michelle. The team will try and uncover what is behind the unnerving events happening in this rural home. To begin the investigation, Michelle meets with Brad and Krista. So why have you called in our home inspection team? A lot of things that I can't really explain have been happening to us. Yeah, I hear lots of noises. I heard a woman and a man arguing in the kitchen once when I was doing dishes. Do you ever see these people or are you just hearing them? One time, I saw the woman's face in the spare bedroom. She looked kind of like um, those old-fashioned women. I didn't see the rest of her body, but I, that's the kind of impression I got. Any other strange noises that you can think of? One time, we set up a tape recorder by the side of our bed, and we went to sleep. And then we played it the next day, and we heard some talking into the tape recorder. So have you recorded anything else in the house? After those recordings, we decided to get some equipment. And during this investigation, Krista got pulled out of a chair. Tell me about this, Krista. 
Hey, well, I was sitting on the chair, one of the rocking chairs at home, and I felt something grab my ankle and rip me off the chair. And at the same time, I felt like something was pushing the chair, too. Did you get hurt? I had trouble walking for a couple weeks. It um, hurt my hip. What else has been happening in the home? One time, I was doing my homework in the dining room, and the door to the kitchen, it started opening and closing really lightly at first, and then all of a sudden, it just swung open. And I got up to look to see what was going on, and I saw a black, massy figure running into the porch, and then he disappeared. Another thing would be our main door opens on its own, even though it's locked. Anything you haven't mentioned yet? I don't really move around a lot in my sleep, and I wake up with claw marks on my back, big red long marks. So what is it that you're hoping that we will accomplish for you? Any information that you can give us is, is great. We'll conduct our complete home inspection and let you know what we find out. While Michelle begins her research into the history of the property, certified home inspector Brian Daly starts his inspection looking for possible explanations into the strange occurrences. All right. Looks like we're well under construction here. The very first item is this door. I know that they're having problems with the door opening on its own. I can see right away that it's not really installed properly, is it? The hardware itself is loose here. It's not even latching properly. And there are gaps all around the storm door, which will let in wind. And if the door's not shut properly, blow it open. My investigation notes tell me that the homeowner, when standing at the sink, hears voices. Looks as though we've got new insulation in the walls here. Certainly, if there wasn't insulation in the walls, sound can really travel from the outside of the house to the inside. We're close to neighbors, we're close to a road outside, which it can all contribute to sound transmission inside the building. A homeowner complains about this door opening and closing on its own. And at the same time, when she came up to investigate, she noticed a shadow crossing from the kitchen all the way down into the front entrance. As far as I'm concerned, the doors in this house are not hung properly, and it's likely letting through a lot of air. So that can cause wind tunnels and channels throughout the house and could have caused that movement. Let's move on to the shadow. There's a large window in the dining room, a large window in the kitchen, and we've got a road right outside. A car passing can cast shadows through all of these windows all the way down into the entranceway. This chair, the homeowner was sitting in. She was sitting cross-legged so her feet weren't on the ground, and uh, she was thrown from the chair onto the ground. It is a recliner rocker, so it does have natural movement.